Good evening, everybody. Uh, Jim, Stuart, Barry, Miles. Good evening to you all. I'm Ben Wilson. Uh, let's uh, start digging into this before it gets too late. That's already a bit late. Yep, that's how you stress test these things. So what is this? Oh yes. Fairly standard, typical IBM power connector. So apparently this thing just doesn't turn on and I'm you know, really not getting a good feel on that button there. I'm just going to see if there is actually any activity through the power. Okay, we do have a light coming up here. So power is getting in, but it would appear the power button may have collapsed. Normally you can get them to go by just giving them a bit of a wiggle around. But this one appears to have been genuinely destroyed. Alright. Not really my normal machine to pull apart, but I guess we will flip it over, get into it and see what happens. must be the day for doing things different because I also had a Samsung S10 come in today and uh, they needed the they needed the SIM card out of that and it was hilariously fun because the SIM card inserter thing that you put in there normally you pop them out they had been bent completely because whatever it was the SIM card had no interest in coming out and I tried with my extra strength ones and the same thing, it uh, had no interest in coming out. Anyway, I took the back off to try and get some better access to the release pins. And even pushing the release pin from within was no help at all. And in the end it just required a, a hell of a lot of force to get that pin to come loose and finally eject the tray enough for me to be able to grab it from the top and yeah, finally get it out. So I don't know what the deal was. I couldn't see any liquid type damage binding it or anything like that. So yeah, it was just a case maybe the plastic had fused together or something. I'm not sure. Okay, we've got some different pins on these back corner too that you can't quite see. Let's see if we can adjust this a little. There we go, that'll do. Yeah, they don't appear to be... You gonna come out? Probably drop damage. Uh, not sure what it is, but not what it was, but all I know is it did make things rather tricky. Commutex, yes it does. If you can find the board view files, then Flex board view will display them. Assuming, of course, I it's a format that Flex board view supports. But yes, I mean, like FZ files are typically ASUS uh, laptop, ASUS laptops. There's a lot of laptops that Flex board view does already have support for. Like if you go to bad caps and you download most of the Dell or Toshiba laptops, often you'll get board views that can be read by Flex board view. Alright. It's, um, if Flex board view and open board view, they are generic board viewers. They're not like ZXW or the others where you are constrained effectively by whatever they supply you with. Board view files are you know, just normal files like any other thing. And so um, you can actually generate your own board view files too. If you are a designer, then you can generate board view files to give to people that will work with and on open board view and flex board view. It's nothing special. Just a case of doing it. 
exploit your schematic with uh, text searchable part names and network names. The only recommendation I would make is that your part and network names, your part names in particular, be something a little more lengthy than just like C9 or something like that. Mostly because otherwise what will happen is you'll get a whole lot of search hits for C9 just in general throughout the text in your schematic. Alright, I saw a bit of liquid damage on that bottom case there. This looks like it's going to be a pain. Let's get this battery disconnected. A bezel. Um, yeah, Altium. If you with Altium, I think you can export to GenCAD or it's like GenCAD IPC three six five. Uh, let's see, t -t 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 OBD that uh, the consolidated OBD, not the separate file OBD. Uh, there's a whole bunch of formats that it will support. <laughs> yeah, it's a spinning Rust one terabyte, but it's also got an SSD there. I'm pretty sure that's SSD. Now this is going to be a pain because it would appear that, of course, we have to take the main board out to gain access to the touch, the on-off button, naturally. Hey Keith, welcome. Commutex, if you do have any questions, just send me a message in email or whatever. Happy to provide some examples or guides. Why does the power button have to be s encased on the other side of everything? Of course, you know this is not going to be a simple, easy search. Uh, yeah, this will be the other SSD. This is that kind of like half or one-third format SSD. Can't say I'm actually a fan of it. First thing that comes to mind is that due to the lack of chips being used, you, know, you can expect probably a higher wear. Hey Travis, welcome. And yeah, I'm still getting used to the haircut. We're getting there. It's better just to be a collapse button or a dome that's missing or something like that because those might get a little bit cranky at the time required to disassemble this. PC laptops always feel like um, they always feel like it's a bit of a hack job to me. It's a case of one department does a board and then everyone else has to try and make their stuff fit with the board and uh, it's it never feels like a cohesive assembly. It's a bit like in the MacBook world, a bit like the 1425. To me, every PC feels like a 1425. And for areas where they couldn't agree or they overshot each other or went past each other, they create some fairly bizarre bridging boards or bridging cables or you know some way of getting around the hiccup that they created
I mean, don't get me wrong, MacBooks certainly have their issues, but overall, I find them to be at least moderately tolerable so far as disassembly and such goes. That said, the 1700 board, the A200 1700, not a fan, not a fan. Hey, fixing things, how's it going? Can you give Kale a shout out? Hello to Kale. Is Kale your young fella? Retaining screws for the fans underneath the heat pipes. I mean, really, why? Why? It's like... You, f you want me to just butcher this on the way out? So effectively, you would have to remove the heat pipe the heat sink in order to uh, I'm gonna have to do it anyway by the looks of it I'm not I don't see myself being able to get that back together and yes indeed the dome has actually fallen off the switch here where did the dome go Nice. Ah, there it is. Knew it would be around here somewhere. I mean, come on, that's just, that's just shonky. Seriously, I mean, how hard was it for them to put a proper switch on there? I mean, yeah, it's a tactile switch, it's not going to get used that much, I do agree. But at the same time, yeah, this is just a pretty standard four pin tactile switch, and it, just over time it looks like the captain tape drift off. And I'm going to guess I should be able to just simply cut a new piece of captain tape and we'll be right to go. I don't want to reuse this one, it you know, obviously isn't functional. Let's make sure we don't lose that dome. If we lose that dome, we'll have to install a new switch. Okay. Yeah, it's a chrome dome, alright. I mean, you'd think they could have at least put a enclosed, um, enclosed type tactile switch down there. You know, one that already had a protruding head on it and stuff like that. Nope. Instead, they just went straight for this style. Yeah, capacitive would have been another good option too. I suppose just the electronics aspect of the capacitive made them double think that. I mean, I don't mind that they kept it simple with like this, but um, damn it, man, why is there a cat hair there? Or some sort of hair, carpet fiber. Freaking fibers everywhere in this room. I really do need to rip the carpet out. The carpet just encourages this sort of behavior. Like at night time when I close up the workshop, carpet starts getting on the blowhorn, encouraging all the fibers to rise up in rebellion.
Sounds good. I'm actually going to just lay this captain tape down a little extended. In fact, I might, um... Yeah, don't worry. I'm not cutting through traces. I see the traces there. Don't worry. That's how you know I didn't cut through them. <laughs> There's a, I might do a siren and actually spot it down with a smidge of hot glue. Carpet is a hoarder. I will tend to agree with you there, Andrew. Because I just don't have the confidence that that tape will actually fully hold. I mean, it should. But I think a little bit of hot glue will help. Just a wee tud. I'm not talking much. Just something to hold that tape down. Yeah, two little dabs like this. I'll do it. <sighs> Okay, 250 is way too hot for this job. Oops. Hundred and twenty is usually fine for this sort of hot glue. Yeah, no. Probably Siren's probably going to see this and go, Oh dear Lord, no, Paul, don't do that. <laughs> and I'm going to go, I don't care. I mean, the captain tape does seem to have made a seal, but I really just want to make sure it doesn't drift any further than this. Okay. I can see that there's the darker area. This sort of inner perimeter is a dark area, which means the captain tape has held itself down. Uh, ben, yeah, I see uh, Stack Exchange is going for a walk. I was trying to get onto them earlier. Okay, I think we should be good now. And Nick. Oh, look, there's a bug in there. Because the real trick here is, can I actually get the board back on without having to take the heat pipes off? That's the real trick of the night. And hey Mark, it's the trick of the night.
Alright, one side in. So we actually managed to do it. I'm surprised. Genuinely surprised. doing it's That was the twentieths being dumb and fighting, you know, just play fighting amongst each other, but causing a whole bunch of ruckus. Okay. And yes, I call them the twentieths. Because they're twins, well, they're from the same litter, and they're idiots. Hey, Rilla. Uh, metric two by five length. You feel like a four. Yep, Tony, that's that's about what you need to hear for the night. You're all set. The way that dome had failed is also explains why I wasn't able to get it to turn on using the usual sort of rubber round technique because basically the dome had drifted completely way off so yeah definitely you're not going to get any activity there going to give this a test start just so that we can be sure we actually have resolved the issue and it's not to some kind of fluke hey Patrick thank you very much for the five dollars much appreciated make up for what I probably won't make for this ah that's a nice sound isn't it there Now, where's that power brick? Nick, do you or anyone chat and know if the 1398 DC boards are compatible from 2012? I, yeah, I also have received conflicting information regarding that. They are most certainly very distinctly different on the electronic side. I have seen some successful usage of uh, cross between them. But certainly I'd prefer not to. Yeah. So yes, I am in the same boat as you. The information is conflicting. Do we have power on? 
I don't believe we have power on. Oh, we do. There we go. Alright. So it's fixed. Awesome. And it's now going to say there's no boot media. Hey, me dog. Basil, the renovations are kind of on hold at the moment. We're having a bit of trouble with general supply and uh, just general issues happening. We've got people who we've paid to do stuff and well various things are happening and they're not able to turn up on time you know, things are being pushed back two three four weeks it's getting a little bit irritating but we're doing okay for the meantime we just sort of focus on cleaning up the yard more you know just what doing what we can I'm not sure how the prices of lumber compare in Australia to... Overall, we probably are more expensive. Certainly wouldn't surprise me one little bit at all. might advise the person that they may want to consider at some point changing the one terabyte D drive into something perhaps a little in fact I'd probably go so far as to recommend that they just change it all to like a two terabyte SSD or something not many people have a lot of luck with the split drive situation on Windows like having D and C and I don't think Microsoft really has helped in that respect either it's basically have a big C drive and that's the end of that unless you unless you really know what you're doing and even then a lot of the software tends not to run too well with that configuration alright so we have a bunch of screws still And I've got to put the Wi-Fi cables back in. It's a lot of work just to fix up that on-off button. Don't worry, the night is not finished. I do have a MacBook to deal with. So no need to cry. Why do I get the feeling I'm going to end up with a couple of spare screws here at this rate? Let's see, what have I got? One, two, three, four, five, okay. nine, eleven screws I need for the actual chassis. Four, seven, ten, okay, I've got, yep, they're all externals. I was genuinely thinking I had missed one on the internals. Come on, come on, get it. Yeah. Yeah, you're such a nay. John, 27th, baby, you're so young. What you gonna do for your 27th, John? Hopefully, something better than sitting here watching me badly cuss in Afrikaans and by badly I mean not use enough bad words in Afrikaans <laughs> 
Man, I do not like the way that this cable, it's just, it's not biting on. So normally when you clip those on, you can feel the clip on. But that one's just sort of like being rather whimsical. It's like, oh yes, you can just lift me up anytime. Because you know I'm not going to... See that one, when you put it on Eclipse, this one... No, not so much. Okay, battery reconnected. Got a similar back look to a PlayStation. Yeah, I mean, they're not much fun when they're misbehaving like that. Okay, you're the T4. Kind of curious that they put T4 screws on the corners. I guess they thought, well, they'll stop people randomly opening these machines up. It's like, yeah, for a few seconds. Mark Harris. Hey, optimize. Hot glue. Oh, you mean the Wi Fi connector? Mm, I've already done hot glue tonight. Yeah, it looks like the battery works, so that's good. Uh, Keith, no, postal service is still well and truly up the trash. Okay, everything looks good. A job fixed. That's what I like to see in this workshop. A job that comes in and goes out on the same day, pretty much. Marvellous. 653. Let's go type in the details for that. Dun, dun, dun. Job 653. Power button, done, assembly, replaced. And that is done. Right. Get rid of these. Yeah, 30 minute fix, that'd be nice, eh? I mean, sometimes they can be like that, but not too often. Alright, now I just need to message someone that I'm about to commence with their job. Commencing with your repair now. Okay. 
This one's going to perhaps be not quite so friendly to us. Hmm, looks like my brightness is a little over pushed. Hmm. Unfortunately, it seems that naturally this cheaper camera is not really up to the ability to show the contrast. Got a cough. <coughs> Three dead CPUs now. That's that's no good. Hey, flying sky. Temperature's getting a little warm in here, even though it's supposedly winter. It's the greatest joke of the day. All right, you took my. Somebody has taken my pentalobe driver for some reason. Oh, looks like it was me. Took it to the other workbench. It's a bad start. There, yeah, Barry, no soldering required. I was I was tempted to, you know, I could have put a replacement switch, you know, a tactile dome switch assembly there. Certainly I have them, but since I found the dome and the captain tape, I figured no point. I'll just put some new tape on, stick it down, and then give it a little bit of reinforcement with that hot glue. Okay. So what have we actually got here? If I haven't signed this one in yet, here we go. There we go. Make sure we don't damage anything by sliding spudges down the wrong way. There we go. It's interesting, this is like the third or fourth one I've had in the last week. Hot glue might count, I guess. Okay, supposedly there might be liquid damage on this, but I'm not sensing any yet, which is not a good sign. Let's plug our USB-C in. Let's see what we get. Oh, wow, one of these ones. Oh, this is going to be good. Oh, I'm going to enjoy this, I hope. We are basically getting apps. Oh, damn you, you came up. Oh, N20 volts. Oh, what's going on here? I was... And it's spinning up. you got to be kidding me. Ooh, not good. All right. Yeah, we definitely got some problems here. Uh, the most problematic is the no disc symbol. Um, no, it's actually, that's not true. It's not the no disc symbol. That is the I do not understand the data that is on the device that I am seeing. The no disc symbol is usually the flashing folder. I'm just going to look at the details of this one. 641. Char I may have a charging issue with the port. Started, and once it reached the desktop, it will restart again. No knowledge of any water damage. Oh, okay, my mistake there. Can turn on using the port right side of the Mac USB C. We don't need to care of data. Oh, cool. Alright, well, thank goodness for that. They don't need data, so that's good because with that 
symbol popping up. It's not a good sign. The news account. Welcome. Hey, Tony W. Good evening to you, good sir. I uh, just see Andrew Hughes is here too. And Warren Stamps. Alright, looks like we're finally starting to catch up with all the early birds. So what I am going to do is certainly disassemble this, take the board out, have a look at the board, because clearly something's amiss. And if we're fortunate, it may be some very localized corrosion of the sort that may sort of tend to change a little bit in transit. And if that is the case, then that's great. Yeah, we, we need a smoking gun. If we don't get a smoking gun, then of course these generally become rabbit holes. I do agree, Miles. I'm not a fan of the way they've done the battery connector. I'm not quite sure what the um, requirements specification was that forced them or changed them over to that style. It's not like they're adverse to having bigger connectors on the board. I mean, they do still have you know, these large ones here. I mean, including the USB-C ones. So I'm not really sure what drove them to this concoction. And I can't imagine that they would have done it for preservation of, uh, how do you say, connection sequencing. Because it doesn't really seem like something that Apple would truly care about. And what I mean by connection sequencing is to ensure that first the battery is connected on the plus and minus and then connect the data lines which will actually then talk to the battery controller and say okay now you can let your power through. It just doesn't really seem like something that Apple would really care that much about yeah maybe it was maybe one of the engineers said look you know we need to guarantee that the battery is physically connected before we even consider activating or talking to it I could be wrong Right, that's always the T4 that catches me. There's another T4 in here, there we go. Now I do have to be careful with the power flex down here. Uh, you need to give this a little bit of heat. I'll first take out this little hinge cover. Let's see, 140, that'll do just fine. But you just want a little bit of heat to soften the glue that it's stuck with. Otherwise you will tear that as you try to get the main board out and you really do not want to tear that because that is a touch ID power button. So you will cry or the customer will cry and get angry at you and when they get angry at you they'll ask you to do things that will make you cry like I want my money back or I want a discount. Okay, so you have been warned. If you don't like giving out discounts or giving up your money, then be careful with that button flex.
Uh, Nick, there's quite a lot compared to the previous generation style MacBooks, you know, the non-USB-C ones. You just have to, you basically just have to force yourself to work on these a lot and get used to it. There's no other real way around. You know, I tried to avoid as much as I could, but inevitably they'll end up at your doorstep, so you just have to get used to them. Okay, what have I missed? Ah, of course. The Wi-Fi one. Okay, we've got a little bit of something going on over here. I can't tell if it's an arcing or... There's a bit of discoloration, that's all over here. Contacts look fine. Just going to take this off for the moment. Wow, okay, well, that's a first for me. Um, I've never seen a CD3215 do that, or have had that happen, and it's underfilled, son of a gun. I don't know if you can see that, but that is a puffed up, cracked, expanded, broken. You can see that? So something really came in and kicked that right in the groin. I'm amazed that the fuse has survived, if it has. Walter, no, the same glass I've had for a while. Unbelievable, that fuse is still alive and kicking. In which case, it might well have been a high voltage. Yeah. So whatever came through was probably of a high voltage. And the reason why I say that is because your fuses blow based on the current. And if you have a high voltage, it's easy to get a lot of energy into the chip without re actually blowing the fuse. So more than likely, it was a bad um, power brick, or a brick had a fault with it. That would be my guess. But it is interesting that it actually does boot. I find that rather perplexing. And everything else seems fine, so it was definitely whatever it was plugged into. Really went crazy. Now, the biggest gripe here is that the damn thing is underfilled. Ugh. Yeah, that's a pain. pain. It's a pain. It's really a pain because you know, I don't have a soldering iron tip that big that you can just sort of pop it on and then you know, have it um, soften everything up quickly for you to get it all off. So I will have to cut in under it. Um, let us hope and pray that uh, we don't pull up any traces. Because that will pretty much be the end of it if I do that. But yeah, really strange that it is actually still functioning. That uh, That's a new one. And that will also be that slight discoloration that I saw. That's why it's always good to look at where the circuit board was when you take it out of the chassis, it can often have hints there as to what's going on or what did go on. Okay, where are we? Now I hope I do have a 
I gotta admit, we are lucky at least that it wasn't, say, this one right next to the MV Ram. Yeah, of all of them to pop like this, that was probably the best one to go. Let's see, mind you, it is pretty close on the other side to here. Uh, I'm gonna have to pick an angle to get in on at it. So preparing things for <laughs> the task ahead is quite important. There is a chance we're going to knock some of those glass diodes and ruin them. Alright, let's get the Grim Reaper out. The Grim Reaper will at least start the process for us. Hey, Marco Kiram, welcome. Good evening. Okay, Grim Reaper only has to work at 250. But I do need something to hold the board down. So we'll use the standard office dead weight, which of course is the old 7 amp hour battery pack. It's a real shame this stuff does not come up like on the iPhone 6 TriStar. I gotta admit, it is actually softer than I was worried. Still doesn't make the job that much easier, to be fair. It will help when it comes to trying to slide the lifter on the underside. And you also gotta make sure you don't scratch too heavily with the uh, Reaper or anything else because you do have tracks coming in under that coating so you don't want to be hurting them otherwise you're really going to have troubles I'm just sort of trying to apply the force upwards once I'm under that chip Gonna get that one other side. So we're just using 250 at the moment, nothing too aggressive. Very hard to get access to these areas because of those caps. You'll hear me go fairly quiet while this process is underway as I try very hard not to butcher it. Oh. Now I've got to try and pick an appropriate lifter. No, definitely not you, you're way, way too aggressive. No, nope, not you. Mm. Uh, don't oh yeah, the you're talking about um there's a gold dot and then two resistors above 
the two pads, in which case, yes, that is factory, factory unpopulated. Hmm. Oh, that's, this is suckful. None of the ones I have here are actually the ones I want. I want the bullnose type lifter. This will have to do. I don't know why I don't have the bullnose one anywhere here. But instead we're just going to have to go with type E, which is this one here. I may r just round off the corners a little bit though. Not really a fan of the sharp edges. did have a pair of tweezer sharpeners around here and it actually does a better job of taking the okay well I've managed to take the worst of the sharpness off so let's get to it how much we can do here and then do it Not liking it, not liking it. Oh, dude. We lost at least one power, but I'm hoping that's an NC. I'm fairly sure that's an NC. Fingers crossed. The fact that I can't see a veer in it gives me confidence. Uh, they're all all the NCs are gonna lift. That's okay, NCs are allowed to come up. Okay, we got one problem there, I can see straight away. Damn it. I really thought I'd avoided that one. Now, yeah, more than two pads, we've got about five or six pads that we've lost. I might run the hot air wick on it and then that way I can scrape off the excess See at least four. 
Not sure why it's so grainy. Yes. See, so the thing is, you can't just, once you take the chip off, you can't just go straight to trying to scrape away that um, underfill. Because if you do that with the solder on the pad still, you'll inevitably catch the solder and pull the pad off. So it's a bit of a, a little bit of a catch-22 sometimes where you've got to get a bit of the underfill off to gain access to getting the solder out. You can also just use a great big iron tip and do it, but I prefer not to take that route, particularly on situations like this. So we're just going to be real gentle. I'm going to worry about these parts much later. They're, they're not anything we care about right now. Now this is a CD3215, SMC would be somewhat easier. And unfortunately this SOB of a CD3215 was underfilled. Okay, any triple five. got to go slow. I know some people can do this really quickly. I've seen some real experts out there do spectacularly good quick jobs on this. But honestly, I'd rather take my time and get it right. It's not a routine sort of thing for me to come across these ones yet. So I'd rather just be that bit more slow and annoying to people watching. <laughs> but we'll get there, we'll get there. There, yeah, Miles, I think you're quite right on that. I had to be punished.
doesn't help is that these things are I'm fairly sure they're designed for right-handed people and of course I'm being left-handed so it does I believe it should be more handled like that but uh, well being left-handed that's what you got to deal with and believe me these things aren't sharp to touch like if you run it against your hand and whatnot it doesn't feel sharp but to circuit boards it just really has the ability to dive in and munch the hell out of things that you just don't want to have chewed up See, we're just taking ever so shallow cuts there. You can see I am picking up the odd bit of solder there too, so I've got to be careful. Again, we're still just at 250. Uh, thick berry because it'd be just a standard footprint and therefore yeah, it's just easier that way and make sure all pins are accounted for because you don't know whether someone's going to by habit tie all the NC's down onto something but that does remind me we need to check the pads that we do have missing to ensure that well you know <laughs> ensure that things are still connected boards this anyway. Oh. It is an 850. Right. And it is this one here. Alright, so we have Let's go to the quad display. Let's bring up the pads. And cross our fingers that we have scored nothing but NCs. So we've got these two here, which is those two there, so thank goodness for that. We've got this one here, which is there, so that's good. And we've got this one here, which I'm going to guess is that one there. Uh, let's see, one, two, three, four, five, six, one, two, three, four, five, okay. Alright, so all the pads that are missing are in fact NCs. Thank goodness for that. What did the underside look like? Yeah, good point. There we go. It doesn't look too bad. Especially compared to the top side. The top side was a bit of a train wreck. You can see the bulge. You can see how it's deformed. And that crack really is the dead giveaway. Like I said, it was amazing that it gave me 20 volts. Now, one thing I'm now pondering is how far did that excess voltage go and is that the reason why we now have that um, non-recognized data system icon like, did something get damaged are we basically doing this for nothing oh Vladimir it's been a while since I've seen you you've obviously been off doing things having a life of your own
this is getting to the point now where I might be able to clear up most of the remaining stuff through the soldering iron tip. I might have to give it some assistive heat though. Because as you know, yeah, that poor little micro tip doesn't have a lot of thermal capacity. Minor bulging, uh, yeah, okay, so the bridge. <laughs> it's not minor, and it's cracked through. Which means the magic smoke has escaped. What is probably interesting though is the control log logic or the communications logic is probably okay, but the MOSFET or the LDO or something in there, power related, probably went pop. Sabatino. Oh. I mean, don't get me wrong, I've seen some catastrophic jobs. I mean, I've fixed up lightning struck devices and whereby the electronics essentially just vaporize. Well, that's pretty much catastrophic, but, uh, but so far as non extreme destructive type work goes, you know, this is still, that's a, still a fair chunk taken out. The beard has been shaved off. Yeah, Oscar, well, I guess everybody's blessed in different ways. Some people couldn't... Some people are blessed with facial hair, although that can be a curse and vice versa. It's all a matter of perspective.
Muhammad. All right. Ed. Now we have the drama of actually putting another C3215 on there. I'm not really liking the look and feel of those pads. For some reason, they are. For some reason, they are going grainy. And I don't know what it is. They accept solder just fine. Like when I put the leaded solder down, they take it just fine. But for some reason, they're going grainy. Now, it's like I'm not getting enough heat down there. Or they're getting contaminated. But I'm just going to have to put a bit of faith into that one and hope it comes through okay. Hey, Coda. Alright, now, 3215. Yeah, this is going to actually be a little bit interesting because, as far as I can tell, I've got nothing but duds with my usual bag. So I may have to do some trickery here. What are you? You're 3217, aren't you? Yep, you're 3217. <laughs> okay, I've got a couple of C00s there. I don't know if they're functioning or not. That is one of the problems when it comes to working with these chips that all have to work for the board to come to life, is that you don't really know uh, the, what am I saying, but by the time you get all the ones that are working together, you're not going to take them off and mark them as like, okay, these ones are good. You're going to leave them on there. So you, there isn't really an easy way to test these things. I suppose what you could do is get a board that only has one. I think, are there any boards that only have one CD3215? Or at least just two, something like a 1708. And proceed to use that as a tester. Do any of the grainy pads, no, they're more central than what the grainy pads were. Okay, so this has been reballed. They're just very small balls, but they are. It is reballed, and it is a genuine one, as opposed to the trashy ones that I've got in my other bag. So I guess all we can really do is put it down. Hey, you use it. Just get that flux spread around. Fifteen thirty four. Does the fifteen thirty four have? Okay, so it's pin one down there. Yep. Just a double check, even though I'm pretty sure I'm right. Looks like a pretty good positioning. Let's go for it. Yes, the coder, they are NC pads. And we, we have checked that. I'm very thankful that they are NC. Now the replacement CD3215s that I'm supposed to have coming from the supplier that gave me the duds, I dare say they put that in, um, what do you call it, uh, slowest freight option possible. So I'll be lucky to see them within two months. Okay. Uh, Gregory W, I have no reliable sources in Australia. Sorry to say.
But you still always get freaked out by pads lifting. It's just, it's a good thing, probably. I had someone bring in a iPhone SE to me, the old SE, like the 5S SE. And at first it looked like it was just going to be a battery. And it passed the sort of initial battery type failure behaviors. But then once I replaced the battery and it's still misbehaving, I'm thinking, oh great, this is a um, TriStar. Or maybe if we were lucky, it'd be a um, Trident chip failure. But given that they just purchased it, I said to them, you know, just send it back to whoever you got it from. They've, they've dodged it up. All right, let's see how we go. We've got 20 volts. Two hundred, two hundred. It's not really coming up to the car. Okay, there goes six, seven hundred. That's good. Four hundred. Settle back to four hundred. So this, I suspect, still has a problem. But we'll put it into the chassis, have a look, and see if it still comes up with that blinking, uh, no pass signage. But at least it does come up twenty volts. So. CD3215 appears as though it is okay. I'm just going to warm up that. Try to pick up some flux. Hello, creature. How are you, good sir? You enjoying the very limited amount of summer that you have over there? Oh, that wasn't very hot at all. I'm sure you're just desperately waiting to get back to six foot deep snow. We're supposedly in the middle of winter here, or close to it anyway. And uh, we had a very warm day today. I've even got the air conditioner on at the moment. As the summer came last week, your skin is blistering. It'll be over in three weeks. <laughs> how did you? How did you even get a sunburn up at your latitude? Uh, that's quite quite a bit of talent to do that. What were you doing? Out in the sun for three days straight? Ten C. It's definitely not ten C here. It's probably about twenty-two or so here at the moment. The weekend was a little bit cool, but that was about it. Thus far. Winter has been a lacklustre disappointment. I want my olive trees to fruit, for goodness sake. I need about two weeks of continuous cold rain. Something like that. I mean, I have no idea what I'm going to do with the olives. But I want to have, you know, I want to see the olive tree actually produce olives. That'll be something for me. Uh. Twelve in Sydney. See, I mean that's warm for Sydney even. Hey, ITC. Uh, welcome along. All right, let's see how we go with this. Oh yeah. Chip shortage. Yes, it's affecting a lot of us. Okay, we've got an apple. Ah, interesting. Alright, so it went apple and then it went to that. That's um, interesting. I wonder if I put this into the apple configurator, I might be able to restore it. 
That would sort of imply something's corrupted on the disk in that case. But since we don't need to worry about data, then that's not a problem. Pram reset. Not sure if they'll do the trick. Looks like it got started, but then dropped dead. Let's see if I can boot it with my um, test macOS. Usually on these machines it's not successful because typically these people have... That's interesting. See how that flipped over a bit there? Yeah, corrupt or something's corrupt. What I'm worried about is that the actual RAM chips are corrupt. Uh, NVRAM, the storage, the SSD chips, that's what I'm worried about being corrupt. Okay, that's a good start. It may not actually let me boot this, I'm not sure. Yeah, I think it's yeah, external boots being disabled. I think. Yeah, Tony, I was saying that before that it's probably something corrupt. Saying that the blinking folder means no disk, but the crossout symbol usually means I don't recognise what's on those disks. Yeah, that's not going to work. Coder, yes, these ones do. So I'll put this into the Apple configurator and you know, maybe we'll get lucky, maybe it will come good. I'll just plug in the extra bits, put it on there and we can get on to the next job. Try command R. Well, as it has said in the what do you call it, in the job sheet, data is not required because they're putting windows on this, but I would like to make sure that the SSD is actually functional, as opposed to having one chip that's dead, which is kind of what I'm worried about. Yeah, if we manage to destroy that CE3215, I um, just have a little bit of concern about that jumping through. Uh, Miles, in this particular instance, they don't need it. They've already indicated that the data is a write-off anyway. So we're all safe on that front. Oh, yummy steaks here. That's what you get, yummy steak, for not being fully dedicated to your task. I mean, gee, I even started with a PC repair just to warm up and get people in. And you still missed it. Not much else I can do for you. Okay, just slightly push that back. Uh, you're not going to be able to see what I'm doing up here, but basically I'm just going to be plugging it into Configurator. And hopefully I can do the f fancy three-finger Wasmaju action. Let's see, where are you, Configurator? There you go. Let's see. Damn it. 
What is it? Control right, control alt, left shift. Pretty sure it is that. And you have to do it one second afterwards. Hey, Margarita Doctor. Is Pedro in here? I hope he's not. Pedro doesn't deserve to be in here. Let's see. Left option control, right shift. Yeah. Oh, Gregory just gave it to me then too, yeah. Control option. Damn it, I plugged it into the wrong port. Oh, not having a lot of luck with that yet. Hmm. Yeah, trying to get him into the DFU mode is a bit of a um, potluck type situation. Uh, now it's just trying to boot again. It is fun on some machines. I have absolutely no dramas getting them into the DFU mode, but <laughs> yeah. Oh, again. They changed the sequence. Hey, Copaz. Because usually I find I've got to hold the button, the power button down for about a second, and then. Yeah. Kopash, you're working? Oh, where are you working? Let's see. Right shift, left option control. Pitbull, uh, let's see. Are you, sorry, are you asking me if I can find use for chips of old IMAX or are you talking about in general? Hey, James Ewing. I'm going to try this again. Yeah, it's definitely not getting into DFU mode. Sorry about this. It'd be nice if there was a cable like they have with the iPhones now. Yeah, you can get that uh, DFU cable that you just plug into the bottom of an iPhone. So even when the screen or the buttons are damaged, you can just go straight into straight into DFU.
Can you get? Let's see. Oh, you have old iMacs. Not really um, a lot of the chips on the iMacs that we really use. It's mostly the, um, the MacBooks. Um, yeah. The iMacs, I don't actually do a lot with the iMacs. I do have someone who wants to send me some stuff. But they are quite a bit of a different beast again. Nope, still refusing. God damn it. Usually at this point, only from 2010 onwards. And even, yeah, 2010 to 2013 is now starting to become a bit of a don't really do it type situation. Unless, mostly because the cost of restoration is greatly exceeding the cost of just simply going up to the next generation but um, yeah certainly 20, 2013 onwards is still popular but prior to that it's getting hard now to have people pay what it costs to revive their machines but um, certainly 2010 still has some life I'm definitely in the right port. <sighs> Wait for someone to make some sort of bad joke out of that one. Okay, plugged in. Apple configurator. One of the batteries a bit flat. <sighs> yeah, Gregory, I'm trying that. Still not having much luck anyway. No, uh, people, no, I, I generally can't can't get the chips from them. The, the chips on the iMacs aren't really ones that I use. Looks like it might be charging the battery at least, that'd be nice. Uh. Okay. Ooh, maybe not. Honestly, you got to be a magical fairy to get some of these ones. Nope, that one's not coming up. <laughs> Ooh. 
Speedorg, one of the board view software has that multimeter readout on screen built into it. Not at the moment. I was doing that, but I've kind of halted for the moment chasing that little feature. I've got other things I'm working on. Yeah, Pupu, look, I, I appreciate you trying to help me. I'm just sort of like thinking for the older stuff. Um, like there's no chips on there that I really need from those. Uh, yeah, not that I'm aware of. The other big problem with the iMac, of course, is that there are no board views or schematics generally available that I'm aware of. There may be, but not that I'm overly aware of. So it's a um, bit of an area that I don't have a lot of expertise in. Look for debug power on your schematic for some info. What? Oh, there, I think we that or we're getting crossed wires here Pitbull I'm sorry it doesn't help that I'm you know running around trying to oh good I am charging got two amps that's great uh, <coughs> yeah we might be getting cross wires here and that's my fault I'm sorry Pitbull my apologies so I know it can be very frustrating when you're trying to help someone and they just keep missing your point Can we try? I'm just going to try to press the R button and see if I can get recovery mode. Nope, no recovery mode. Oh, that's nice. Try diagnostics. Commander, is it Commander or R? Ah, I don't know. There we go. I've got this is diagnostics though. Uh, let's see. So you'll basically just tell me call Apple. Have you tried an MV Ream set? I haven't yet, no. If you can send me a list of what you can... Uh, okay, alright then. Uh, Pitbull, can you send me an email? Um, just making mention of who you are. and I'll just give my email address here, just in case you're not sure of it. Command Alt R. Okay. Well, let's run I run diagnostics for now. Let's see. Not investigate. Blah blah blah. Run. I agree. At least something comes up. All right. So the next machine that I need to work on, which. Uh, is one that we fixed the other night. It was the PI3 USB 3232 job. When I got it all back together, the touch bar doesn't work. So we've got a problem there. And I've tried a new touch bar and it still doesn't work. So, um, yeah, a bit of a problem. Because um, basically, unless I can get the touch bar working, the machine is essentially useless. So we have to. Bring it back, number 639, Goose Drank Wine.
Thank goodness for the low resolution. Okay, so yeah, I got a new touch bar for it, plugged it in, it doesn't come up. Oh, so I can't take my glasses off and no glasses there, buddy. Which, yeah, I'm not exactly sure. I mean, yeah, there's damage here. You can see the damage. But because I plugged in a separate unit, it um, should have bypassed that, but it didn't. So whatever liquid damage happened on those flexes has subsequently caused it to destroy the electronics on the board by the looks of it. Travis, what did you kill? I had your supply on seven instead of five. What did you kill? Gecko thought it was funny. And this really annoys me because I actually put it all back together. I guess that's my punishment for not having fully checked everything before I reassembled in its entirety. Actually, if you can just give me a minute, I need to go and check on the fur kids because as far as I know, a leader has gone to sleep, which means they're out on their own and best thing I go check. Rose, thank you. Never had the time to watch the full stream. Uh, unfortunately, yeah, <laughs> I've got a scoot a bit here. Uh, it's not a dead CPU, by the way, because it is booting. Okey doke. Uh, got myself a snack while I'm at it. No issues found. Oh yeah, what a load of crap. No issues found my butt. Fair baby is good. A3X. Ooh. 
Let's see if we can do a recovery. Internet based. Obviously the person's going to put Windows on it, but that doesn't matter. I want to be able to test this machine to make sure it actually is, everything's working. Now I realize the diagnostics, Apple say nothing's wrong, but well, it's Apple's diagnostics, so we can't trust that. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, two. Hey Daniel Lickland, how are you going, good sir? And Andre's here, and Anthony. Alright, All right. that's in the process of. Ooh, there's a Pi 32 USB 2424 in there. Hmm. Alright, so we have to disassemble this again, and we have to find out why we're not getting a um, touch bar activity. Now, I have tried just randomly touching the touch bar and no activity occurs so whatever it is it's more than just a case of no um, driver activity as in no lighting up or you know and the touch is also not functional so i don't know what's going on there i don't really deal with touch bar faults like this so this is a bit of a new new territory for me Then again, that's what everyone loves. Everybody loves things getting into new territory. Then you all get to laugh at me. And they go, ho 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 ho, Paul's so stupid he doesn't know how to do that. But you do it enough times, and you go from being the Paul is so stupid to, oh, go ask Paul, he knows all about those. That's the thing, you've got to realise at some point you've got to start somewhere. It's not like we are blessed with the matrix style brain insertion and systems we do have to do it the old fashioned way still and watching a thousand Lewis Rossman videos doesn't really do the trick either Tamaras, oh, you're consistently dropping that cash there buddy Thank you very much. I do actually appreciate it. I will say that. The amount of wildlings that we have to keep fed, it certainly goes a long way. You're right, Miles. I would not want to be... I would not want to be the um, go-to guy. I'd only want to be referred to as, but not actually pursued as. <laughs> it's kind of like, you want the money, you don't want the fame. That kind of sort of scenario, but unfortunately they do tend to come together, which is rather frustrating. Just ask Lewis and, and uh, Linus and all those people that are famous. They don't want the fame. Not usually. <sighs> oh, Soda tries to create scenarios that become laughable for him. He's actually doing pretty badly lately. He hasn't had too many successes with these pickings of dead CPU or whatever. So I think he needs to up his game a bit. Getting slack there, Soderbridge. Uh, flying Scout, uh, 30,000, roughly 30,000. See, I'm even talking myself up there. I'm still very much growing my baby legs like Ryan Reynolds in Deadpool 2 well the likes of Lewis are more like uh, Juggernaut and just ripping people like me in half at whim
still very much a newbie. Probably will always be a newbie. Ow. Okay, what have I forgotten? The reason why I was able to get away with taking that up without heating it is because I've done it so many times on this particular board that the glue is now has lost a fairly considerable amount of its sort of like uh, what can you say stickiness. Right. It's rather tricky to try and diagnose these little s SOBs. I mean, even though the flex, unfortunately you can't see very well, even though the flex has a bit of damage around it, it's not really what you would consider damage to stop it from functioning. Let's see, just lift up the... No, that's what I wanted. Okay, that on the other hand is... Eee. Yeah, alright. Didn't see that one. So this actually will probably be a replacement job. Yik. For as gunky as that is, it doesn't actually look like it's fatal. I mean, don't get me wrong, it's downright nasty. Fatal? Not so sure. We'll add some heat, dislodge these. Yep, that's why you got to put everything through testing. Yeah, the pins are all there. Like I said, it's it's not great, but it's also not fatal in my opinion. I think an ultrasonic would actually clear that up. We've got a bigger problem with the hinge being in the way. So we're going to need our T8 driver. Come on. You can do it. Thank you, Jim. Take care. Thank you as always. I really appreciate you being here. Where's my beloved spudger? Actually, you know what I can do? I can just lift the screen up and hope you don't hear a horrible crack. Because if you hear a horrible crack, that means you've just destroyed the screen and you're going to have a bad day. Looks like we need a T3, is it? Or is it pentalobe? It's a goddamn pentalobe. Sick people putting pentalobes in there. Alright, so I'm just heating up the flex to soften the adhesive. This is only a 250. It's the same sort of stuff that I use for, you know, getting overfill or, you know, just general stuff off boards. It's not enough to melt most plastics unless you really leave it on there. Yeah, that's quite strong adhesive. Mm. 
nuts. It may not upset the circuit boards, but it does upset my fingers. Yeah, oh, oh, damn it. Ah, Miles, the uh, 1700 is particularly bad. Uh, what they were thinking with that one? Fortunately, I did buy this with the extension cable in it, this thing here, so that's a good... We have to replace that connector there. Now, if we're lucky, we might have something in the iPhone realm that fits that. So it kind of looks like something that you'd find on an iPhone. Let's see, what have we got here? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17. So 34 way, it depends if you count those, it'd be 38. Let's go have a look on an iPhone and see if we can find anything. Ah, looks like we've got to reinstall MacOS. I see her. Are you kidding me? How old is this machine now? And the touch bar works on it. <laughs> uh, let's see. iPhone 6. Let's try one of those. Agree. Agree. It's got boot camp on it. Okay. It's got a 512 gig drive in it. Big sir, don't you dare say anything good about that. Oh my goodness. Big sir, all the technical things aside, I think the most offensive thing about it was their choice of graphics design. It was just truly hideous. Mm, okay. So if we're going to find something, it's going to be on a screen. I guess he's thrown away most of his iPhone 6 screens. I'm sure I've got a box for him somewhere. Oscar, why is that? What, what, why do you say I couldn't put it into DFU mode? Because of the fact that it was on um, High Sierra? Is that what you mean? Okay, I'm just going to go into the other room and pick up a couple of dead screens. Hello. Are you doing, Mama? Really? I thought you were still Ah, you little rat bag. Yep, can't trust you kids. Don't you even think about it. Good thing you missed the customer machine. Alright, say hello. There you go. Hello, Milo. What is it? Yep. Alright, now you're out of here. You had your five seconds. There you go. <sighs> five seconds and they can cause so much drama. Can the cat reball? Uh, 
You know, how to wake me up pretty bad, that's for sure. Oh no, I think we've got a bad feeling about this one. It's going to be one of those ones that, sorry sir, we don't have anything that matches what you require. Nope. Nope. Host Mac must be on the same OS as the target Mac you want to restore. Oh, okay. Things you don't learn. Oh, is that really a match? This is an iPhone 10 screen, by the way. That looks like a pretty close match to me. I'm a little worried that it might actually be fractionally wider, though. I guess, you know, the easiest way for me to test this is to actually plug it in to the receptacle. It's almost perfect. Yep, that, that does it. iPhone 10. There you go. People yell at me for keeping rubbish in the house. Can't wait till I tell the leader that it saved me tonight. Actually, in fairness, she she never <laughs> she never complains about any of that sort of stuff. I was just pretending it was being a stereotypical situation, which it is not. All right. But that was the easy part of the process. Now we're about to do the second hardest part. Let me a laptop. Well, it looks like it was some sort of carbon-based drink. Got a lot of sugar in it. it smells like lovely toffee, though. A hey, creature. Oh, wow. Already. <laughs> Time goes by so quick. Okay, so we've got a bit of corrosion on two pins here. More than likely they are power pins. So we are going to have to gently clean that up. $10 is Pepsi. Why do you associate Pepsi with these sort of faults? People that create these faults? Yeah, I'm going to have to get rid of the flux that's hardened on there. 
don't know why this flux hardening all of a sudden. I know mean, it's cool weather, but it's not that cool. Okay, I think I'm going to use some 8020 here. Pick up a lot of that old drink. If I don't use the 8020, then more than likely the liquid damage will just probably come back. And you can see those, there's two and a half pins pretty much. And there's a bit of carbon build up over here. I've got to be careful, I don't want to completely break off those pads. delicate, just delicate. Creature, I've got to say, all the years of um, model aircraft work really stand you in good sort of stead for um, doing this kind of electronics work. You know, all the, solder, uh, all the balsa wood fine carving and such. Hey Mohammed, good evening. Okay, I'm not sure if there is meant to be a connection between those two. is no. What was happening there was it was actually running on top of the carbon trace. There's a, there's a little bit of carbon there and the solder was content to stick onto that. Find your skills being used daily when you rework 201s. Oh yeah, definitely. I don't get too many of the 0105s on here, mostly because I don't do a lot of work with the iPhones. But yeah, once you get to the iPhones and you got the 0105s, that's a bit of a pain. Mostly, it's a case of you just start trusting in trusting in the surface tension. <laughs> and hoping for the best. Okay, we're going to drop the air right down to about 20 and also the heat I'm going to take way down to about 340 or so. Now I've got a 9mm nozzle on here so it should be fine. Hey Jan Robert.
couple of those I'm going to have to touch up, but overall it's pretty good. Thank goodness for the nano, uh, not the nano, the uh, Hacko micro pencil. Let's put a smidge, that's way too much. There you go. No. I think it's worth giving that a test. Hey Micromage, how are you today? Sorry if it's not in focus, it's the last thing I really care about right now. Hey Michael, yeah, things are all sort of settling down. We're getting, you know, up and about our uh, things again. Renovations are kind of on hold. We'll, it's mostly just yeah, everybody's slowing up. Ah oh, man, I didn't get that flux out of the central channel. The in-laws are doing okay after the break-in. There's a few things that few mementos I'll never get back. This is just to soften the flux. I think that's as good as I'm going to get in the short term. Just so we can test. Test see whether you know, things are going to come back up or whether I'm going to have to now look more at the main board itself and see what damage has occurred there. Okay, which one is the dud one? Okay, this one here is the new one, so that's good. We'll drop the board back in, boot it up, see what happens. Ach, niemand. What's worse is I actually remember to put the rubber retainers for the uh, fans on. It's like I did everything right. That's usually that's a bad sign. When you do everything right with the reinstallation, then you've probably done something wrong. But at the same time, there are times when you think everything just doesn't go right for me when I'm putting the board in so is it the universe telling me that I've got something wrong that I need to fix honestly at the end of the day I think the universe just enjoys messing with you no matter what route you take 
It's like, whoa, whoa, this guy's get caught wind of what we were doing. Let's change it up. Of course, people will probably think I'm crazy talking like that. And I'm somewhat considering it myself to be crazy. Ugh. Sod's law, yeah. Or Murphy's law. Is there a difference between Sod's and Murphy's? Or are they basically the same? Okay, the only thing I really should do here is actually reaffix these hinges. There's something we all know is that when it comes to MacBooks, do not mess with screens. Do not give them any reason to go wrong on you. Okay. Now, unfortunately for you, I'm not going to be able to show the screen. I'm sorry. Okay, well, we're beating still at least. <sighs> I have a feeling that the board is going to need some sort of rework. Still got nothing on the. You can see nothing on the trackpad. And then. Oh, the touch. Whatever. And you're touching this. Nothing's. Nothing's happening here. Uh, Christian, which uh, which gym are you talking about? Because um, rural fire service gym, the local Australian one, he was just here. All right, so yeah, unfortunately, it appears we do have some sort of issues with the communications to the touch bar. Now, I don't know what the initialization protocol is, so I'm suspecting that, like with a screen, it probably first checks and says, hello, screen, are you out there? Anyone out there? And if it gets a response, it sort of then goes ahead and you know, activates things. So I'm going to guess maybe some sort of I2C comms or whatever comms this thing uses. We're just going to have to have a look around on the lines and see if we can see any damage. Ah, good, my installation thingy is done. Australia, mate.
Okay, so we do have some damage that is around maybe some of the areas. A bit of damage here, but these are just uh, the caps to ground. I guess it'd be better if we look at the board view and schematic. Where's the time? Oh, it's already past midnight. Oh, crikey. Okay, full view. Okay, so th these are the two connectors, J5100 and J5110. Okay, and that's that one there. 5100 is the touch by the looks of it, and 5110 is the display. So I'm probably going to focus on the display first and see what we got here. Like, okay, for instance, this U5111 is probably something I would look at first, uh, given that it's... Uh, yeah, 511 and 5100. And look around those areas and see if there's any damage. Okay, uh, five triple one. That's this little fellow here. What's the guess? Okay, we do seem to have. Okay, so we have got corrosion that's been down here. And I'm going to guess this is also something related. Is it? Is it? Is it? Nope, it's an acceleration center. Damn it. Well, that's disappointing. Yeah, we're going to have to fix that anyway, now that I've broken it. So this was the USB 32 chip that we replaced. I wonder if they're communication filters. Michael, ask what cam you use for the microscope. What's your recent stream? You said you missed a 4K one. Oh, right. Um, okay, the 4K thing was actually, it was a camera that Jim donated to me. It was a Panasonic 4K handheld cam recorder, and that was for the overhead. That was like... Um, this view, uh, is it? This view. Okay, that was the 4K one I had. I've had to switch back to just the uh, Logitech 920 for the moment because I've blown up the HDMI adapters and I'm basically saving up for an HDMI card. And then the card will have the four inputs and then I'll be able to put back. The the microscope camera has HDMI output, which is what I prefer to use. And also because it can do 60 frames per second, which is nice. But at the moment I'm doing USB on that one. The These cameras, yeah, they're, they're, they're not too bad, but they're not the greatest. They are just cheap. Well, I shouldn't say cheap. They're you know, medium price consumer type webcam zoom type cameras. This is a... This one here is the Logitech 922. This one here is the 920. There's not a huge difference between them. I mostly use them together like this so that it makes it easy for me to be able to set up the device naming. Because otherwise if I've got two 922s, Linux gets a little bit upset. The, uh, let's see, that you can't see. This camera here, it's in my tools list. It's a fairly pricey Sony sensor unit one but it is worth it okay we're just going to check the continuity on those filter packs okay filter packs are fine Okay, so that's these things here. They're all fine. So what's this U5100? Where are you? Alright, you're up the top. I think there was a little bit of corrosion up in this area. 
Uh, that looks... Yeah, okay, so we have this corrosion here. Barry West. Oh, well, the camera is fine, Barry. It's the capture card that I've got to get saved up for. But thank you. 3GS, 3GS. Um, I'm trying to decide whether I get the 2 port Mage Well or the 4 port Aya one. I think I probably should be fine either way. They all seem to be based on the same technologies. Okay, I want to see what these two test pads are for. Let's see. USB. Okay, they're not involved. Yeah, at this point, really, we're just going around trying to find anything that's related to the trackpad, uh, touchpad, and might be damaged. Okay, this is all speaker audio. That's not going to reflect. So that could be damaged, maybe. This here doesn't look like it's got any damage at all, so I'm disinclined to start fiddling with that. You know how I feel about messing with things that have no apparent damage on them. See ya, Brian. Thank you for being here. Just seeing if there's any corrosion in that little four pin switch. There, so I've got no corrosion there. The only thing I've got is that acceleration sensor, which is kind of annoying. SMC fan, OPWM. Why do you mention SMC uh, 3X? Yeah, the connections look good. There was no corrosion on them at this point. The corrosion was on the other side, not on the top side. They look quite pristine. Just remember, remind me to fix up that cap before I forget later. J5100. Could have been a piece of fluff. Certainly I didn't see any corrosion on the other side of it. Certainly nothing that would cause this sort of fault that I can imagine. Uh, yeah, I think I saw a piece of fluff in there and I just sort of kept going. sensor you'd think that if the lid opens say oh you're not seeing this I was gonna say if you think the lid open that would uh, that would mess with the screen itself as well I mean, maybe not but okay l5100 I'm just going to test the continuity on that if we're lucky that might have frazzled itself and it is that burnished looking one but of course that's probably from the ultrasonic cleaning not from okay we do have an open circuit there maybe let's go to dire uh, resistance mode 
let us hope and pray we actually have an open circuit on that. Now you want to tell me you only got one point. Yeah, you're lying, little hag. So why didn't you beep in continuity mode? Oh, you do now. Oh, well. Hopes and dreams dashed. Okay, that's meant to be 7k5, that's bang on the money. All these resistors look good, everything there looks good. Like I said, it's really difficult to try and blame that. Could it be a sleep sensor? Yeah, I mean, it. Uh, trouble is, yeah, I don't know where all that corrosion was on the connectors. I don't know how that's. Uh, how can I say? Because it's a bit of a mixing cable, like it takes creates two cables out of the one, or splitting cable. I don't know how to convey what I saw in those pins that were all corroded to what's on, you know, what's on here and here. Where's Q fifty one hundred? It's right up there. See, none of that there looks upset. Like I said, we had a little bit of liquid there, and that's about it. We've got a little bit of liquid there, but that's not bad. Actually, I just don't like digging up stuff that hasn't uh, given me fair reason to dig it up. Okay, the only thing I could think of is maybe, what if there's a common line between these two? Because yeah, we do have this corrosion here. No, can't see any commonalities there. Well, I'll, I'm going to lift that chip, and I'm going to fix that cap. Before I forget, the reason why I want to lift the chip is just in case there is some corrosion under there that I've missed. Looks good. Yeah, I don't know if the... <laughs> I 
I just kind of threw that back down on there. <laughs> I don't know if it's legit or not. At the very least, I probably should put some extra flux under there and start it, try it again. Did you try the board in a different chassis? I tried it with a different tr um, touchpad assembly. Uh, yeah. <sighs> Touch bar assembly, and that was to no avail. Let's see. That there is a what? Two twenty narrow farad, ten volt to a one. Who comes up with these values? Ugh. Now, because it's a filter one, I probably will have to actually honor its size and things like that. I mean, I could be wrong. It could just be filtering the power line. Yeah. I'm not exactly sure. I mean, it does look like it's just a power line, filter line. Because it's, uh, it's uh, that's the cap there. See, it's on VDD and VDDIO, so yeah. I think maybe I'm being paranoid. It's just interesting they actually have a coil, uh, a filter inductor on it. Anyway, we'll, we'll find another one of these. Let's see, 22 microfarad, 10 volt, 201. They're going to be on pretty much every single board. Would the customer ever disable the trackpad? I doubt it because without that you don't have the escape button. It's one of the earlier versions where you don't, yeah, the escape button is in the uh, touch bar. Absolute madness. Hey, Ratmole. I'm just waiting for a board to come up that I like using. I've got 3437 or a 165, something like that. It's going through the iPhone trash at the moment. Well, lo and behold, it's on an 850. Who would have thought? Oh, come on. Tell me you're on the 3437. Or a 165. I cannot believe it. It's not on a 3437 or a 165. Okay. Color me shocked. Alright, well, we can pull it off the 840. That's all I need. You're not an 840. You're, uh, you're an 840. Alright, there you are. No, uh, Rat Mole, it's a bit late, and yeah, I didn't get much sleep the night. night. But to be fair, I didn't get a lot of sleep in general, but... Last night was particularly bad. Seriously, the part find feature on Flex Board View is... Except that is not a 201, that's a 402. You lying hag. I should have known it looked a bit big.
Triple three two. Oh, I know why these are. I know why these. I'm getting these false matches because the part number is 201. Has 201 in it. Well, that explains that. Show you what I mean. See, I'm looking for 0.22, 10 volts, and then 201, and it finds the 201 there. That's a nuisance. All right, I'm gonna have to just. Uh, oh, what have I done here? 875. Nope, don't want you. Yeah, I'm gonna have to put something similar enough in there. Technically speaking, I can probably fit this... Yeah, I can fit this 402 on it. It'll do it. It's the right voltage and it's the right capacity. It's just the wrong physical size. But in this case, that's not really a problem. I swear I can see a spot of corrosion on this. Okay, what is this? I'm not sure what that part is, but we'll search for it. Looks like it's fairly common on the new boards. Hey Daniel, uh, keep them well, causing trouble. Yeah, the usual. Two three nine. I have a two three nine. I know I have a two three nine. Ah, uh -huh. blessed are my days. Stop two three nine. No great surprise, it's in a pretty much the same area. Hopefully, it's still intact. I have looked at it at an angle before, but that's the problem, is that I didn't see it when I looked at an angle, but I can almost certain, I've got to feel there's a bit of corrosion just here. So, um, it's more of a touchy-feely thing. Yeah, sometimes it can just be rest because remember see the other problem is this board has been ultrasonic so therefore I can't rely on 
the hints so much. Yeah, I'm making sure that doesn't go flying away. Damn it. Is now. Uh. Was a bit of a sneeze fest. Connected, but not by a hell of a lot. All right, if this doesn't fire up and run, then we're just going to have to leave it for tomorrow because yeah, it's approaching 1 o'clock in the morning here. So this is now becoming the time where you make mistakes that cost you an additional day of work rather than progressing you towards success. Uh, we don't really want that. I mean, sure, it may be entertaining for some of you, but it in reality, I do need to make an income which means I do need to maintain some degree of success when it comes to repairs
Now you may be wondering why I reconnect the battery each time with this one. It's because without the battery connected, this particular machine runs profoundly slow. I mean, really slow. It takes about five minutes to actually boot. Whereas once you connect the battery, it only takes you know, 15 seconds. Well, it's um, 42, 1242 at the moment. And it appears still without any success, unfortunately. So, yep, we're going to have to just leave this till tomorrow, I'm afraid. Uh, that's a shame. So I got, there's no response or anything, so it's, it's either not detecting it or, yeah, I'm not sure what to think. Shut this down. At least we had two successes, right? You know, we had the Lenovo's fixed up, and then that uh, underfilled CD3215's fixed up. So, you know, we did have a couple of wins. We just don't have this finalised win. What I might do, actually, is check with the owner of this tomorrow and say, look, yeah, we, we don't have a functioning touch bar at the moment. Do you want us to do a backup of the machine right now? Uh, because, you know, make sure the data doesn't get lost. And then from there, we can dig into it a bit more and, you know, see what's going on. Uh, Terry Taylor, no, we've tried with uh, another touch bar. It's the same problem. So it doesn't appear to be touch bar fault itself. Um, like I said, we had a nice shiny brand new one and this is the 13 inch one it's not the 15 inch one and that still no success with that so all right well thank you very much for being here and like i said two out of three it's not the worst ratio wish it could be better but maybe tomorrow anyway you all have a good night or good day and i'll catch up for you later until then take care